Good evening, this is Truth Seeker here, and I'm making a quick video about something that happened uh, the other day, just a couple of days ago, with one of the governing body members, Tony Morris, uh, of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And it spread like wildfire around the internet. I mean, I'm not talking about something that you probably don't know about already. And I'm certain that many of you have uh, feelings about what happened uh, with uh, Tony Morris, this governing body member who got caught on camera at a local discount liquor store, Bottle King, in uh, Ramsey, New Jersey, uh, just a few miles from here. Uh, again, I live very close to Watchtower headquarters. And um, a lot of people, I've seen many individuals express their disbelief, their shock over the hypocrisy of this man who is so outspoken that he has the nerve uh, to be able to go out in public on a day when he should be in meeting, uh, buying large quantities of expensive alcohol. And I'm certain that many of you have seen the uh, video. Uh, Lloyd Evans, I believe, is one of the first to have revealed this uh, incognito video that captured Tony Morris purchasing uh, this, this liquor from the... Um, Bottle King liquor store. But <clears throat> it's not the act that is so reprehensible in this circumstance. It's, I mean, there are plenty of people. Uh, who, who, who knows, who even cares if Toni Morris has a, a drinking problem, except that a man in that position shouldn't be had, you know, his judgment has got to be skewed uh, if he has a, an alcohol problem. And uh, that could be one of the reasons why he has so readily and steadily historically spoken such outrageous things, uh, such as um, a, a, a young man who isn't a uh, uh, ministerial servant by the age of 23 is not marrying material that uh, he speaks out uh, about against higher education. They're, they're, these things are reprehensible because they impact people's lives. He is the leader of a major, well, it, it may not be a major religion, but it's no small pickings. There are 8 million followers who claim to be Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, according to Jehovah's Witnesses' own statistics. And he is the moral guide. He is the, he is the leader that, that places himself up there in that position among uh, the eight other uh, governing body members as the ones who set the standard, who set the set the uh, model, so to speak. Uh, you know, in, in the Bible, the Apostle Paul says, follow me as I am a follower of Christ. And they, these leaders uh, in, in the church, and Paul recognized that, are the models of what it is to be a follower of Christ. And so, all eyes are on them. They are, whether or not it's right or wrong, uh, they have an obligation to set a standard, especially if they're going to be the ones that um, have a voice in expressing to people what is right to do, what is wrong to do, how to live their lives. And this is a man, remember, that also claims to be one of the 144,000. Now, in Jehovah's Witnesses, as in the Bible students, in fact, this is where they got the, the, the teaching was from the Bible students, from Charles Taze Russell, that only 144,000 
people on this planet, out of the billions and billions of people that have lived on this planet for the entire history that human beings have been on this planet, are qualified to be part of the 144,000 who rule from heaven. And, and so to be a part of that elite group, you must stand out. You must stand out and above the rest of humanity in, in your moral conduct. And does Tony meet this standard? He tells young men to defy their country's laws and go to jail rather than serve in the military. There are hundreds of young men in Korea, South Korea today, that are in jail for uh, not accepting uh, the service alternative, non-combatant service alternative, because uh, Tony Morris and his cohorts, his collaborators in crime, have decided that it's, it's wrong for a young Jehovah's Witness man uh, to take that option, uh, even though that they'll never fire that gun uh, by taking the non-combatant option. And that young man has his life ruined because he's marked with a conviction, a federal conviction. And, and what are that young man's prospects at getting employment or gainful employment for the rest of his life? And he's just starting out life. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's, he's young and he's uh, impressionable and he thinks he's doing the right thing by refusing service because a man like Tony Morris, who is supposed to be the moral voice of, of this religion, is telling him that he shouldn't serve. Tony Morris is the man who tells millions of people that they have to shun their family members as if they are dead, to treat them as if they're dead, because they have decided to walk away from the Watchtower religion. He is, a, he is a man who is not supposed to take any political convictions. He'll stand up there and tell you to not to vote, that it's wrong to vote, that the only legal government is them, the governing body, that they are the government, and they are the only legal government on this planet, and that they are approved and backed by Jehovah God and will be set up as a government in the thousand-year kingdom after God erases and annihilates seven and a half billion people on this planet. That's the man who is going to assume the reins uh, of government. And uh, he's, he's telling people uh, to how to live their lives. And, and basically, all the things that they tell individuals to do to avoid uh, higher education, to, to uh, forego uh, conscientious objections, uh, service alternatives, uh, to shun family members, to not accept blood when you need blood, and, and there are no statistics as to how many people uh, have died over the years over this, this policy, this, uh, this ridiculous policy that has no basis in, in reality. And, and even in the Bible, there's nothing uh, to base that idea. Yeah, otherwise, uh, there would be... Uh, a billion or two billion other Christians who uh, accept uh, that idea that blood is is wrong to take. Uh, so you know this is a this is something that is killing people, and he does this behind the camera. He does this behind the camera from the stage of a JW broadcasting set. And here he is out on a Sunday morning when he tells people they should be out there doing the door-to-door -door service in the pouring rain, witnessing to their neighbors and to their community. And he's out there buying 
a trunk load of booze. And, uh, you know, it's not that there's necessarily anything illegal about it, but it's a hypocrisy. This man has a higher standard and should be held to a much higher standard. He should be living his life uh, to a much higher standard as an example to the 8 million followers of, of Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, the, the, this argument, well, they're only human, uh, doesn't fly. It doesn't fly in, in, the, in, the, in the fact that what they tell young people uh, and tell individuals to do in their life ruins their lives. And, and here, behind the safety of a camera, they're, uh, they're, um, <laughs> I just got past a note, uh, that it was, uh, expensive whiskey too. It was a hundred, over a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey, the top shelf. I don't know. I don't buy whiskey, but, um, the, my first experience, uh, drinking as a teenager was with a, a bottle of Imperial whiskey. And I regret that, uh, you know, I, I don't think I drank whiskey ever again after that, but it was, uh, it was um, not a good experience for me, 13 years old. So anyway, I've spoken myself, I've spoken my voice on this. It's just the hypocrisy. And they're a charitable status. They, they're, co they're a company, they're a, they're a corporation that, that uses brutality, uses brutal uh, tactics uh, the, the people have the, the, the right to speak. We have a, the a First Amendment in the United States, and, and there are other statements similar, you know, the, the, the rights of human rights uh, for the freedom of speech. And, you know, these, these, uh, these guys use brutality. They're threatening individuals who, who criticize them. Um, I understand that they've been sending letters to uh, activists who have used uh, their material uh, as uh, for violations of um, uh, for violations. <laughs> My wife is burning a ten dollar bill. Don't do that, please. <laughs> uh, the uh, where was I? It's it's uh, it's a bad thing uh, for these guys if they if they can't live the life they're telling others to live then they shouldn't be up there telling people how to live they shouldn't be telling them what to do with their lives and it's wrong and I th that's basically it I mean. I've written my congressman. I've got no reaction. They should not be a charitable status. They are not a charitable corporation. They don't lend aid to individuals in dire straits. Let's say when a um, hurricane disaster relief uh, is needed, they, they only help Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't help the world they believe that the only ones that, that count are Jehovah's Witnesses, but at the same time, uh, this governing body is ruining the lives of the people uh, who are, are professing this faith. And they're losing people by, by the droves as a result of this, and they should be, because they're hip hypocrites. They're hypocrites. Um, I don't know what he was doing in that Bottle King store, uh, buying, uh, if it was for himself or for some function. I doubt it was for a function. He, uh, he, a corporate leader doesn't go out and buy for a party. He has his uh, administrative assistant. You know, these guys have... Um, what they call governing body assistants that help them. They, they're the ones that should be going out and buying this stuff. I have a funny feeling that he's got a secret stash somewhere out in the woods. 
and <laughs> like a 14 year old kid uh and he goes out and he uh gets a nip or two uh, uh who knows um but i i just uh, i feel the umbrage that so many other people feel even though it, it's not directly a bible student uh issue directly uh the watchtower started this whole business they started this the bible student movement they started the jehovah's witnesses this the, the, no, none of this would exist if charles taze russell hadn't started the watchtower bible and tract society and uh it's it's just a shame and that's the reason i'm speaking out on it it you know i'm sure that this been this has been spoken about ad nauseum by uh, thousands and thousands of people i understand that uh, uh one site uh, j uh, john cedar's channel uh lloyd evans channel had over 30,000 hits in just a couple days uh, as a result of the, the breaking of this news. But I think it wouldn't be so, so reprehensible if these men themselves weren't so reprehensible in what they're doing and what they tell people to do. I mean, Tony Morris is the guy that tells parents to blackmail their children uh, that not to 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 withhold their getting a license, a driver's license, uh, until they baptize. Now, is that the way you want to bolster the ranks? Is that the way you want you want to use coercion to to make members to boost membership? He's a crime boss. That's all. He's he's acting like like Don Corleone. And the rest of those guys uh, sitting around the, the board table. And, you know, they're chickens. They don't even have the, 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 the B-A-L-L-S to admit that they're, that they're the, the ruling voice for the Watchtower and its activities. When, when the Louis Lopez case came out, there was a letter. Um, Garrett Loesch, the longest standing member of the governing body, was called to testify in that case as a representative of Watchtower uh, and its policies on how to protect uh, young people in, uh, in, in their organization. And, that, and, and, and Garrett Loesch uh, defied a subpoena. He broke the law. He defied a subpoena that, that called him in as a representative of the Watchtower. And you know what that son of a gun did? He sent a letter back from the legal department saying that he was not a member, that he was not a, um, a, a board of directors. Uh, he was not on the board of directors. He was not a, an officer of the company, of the Watchtower, that he was in essence not connected in any way uh, to the Watchtower and its activities. And that is just plain chicken. And the same thing with uh, the, the Aussie guy um, that's on the uh, governing body. Uh, when he was called to testify, I'm getting worked up. I can't remember his name right off now. I don't have them all memorized. Uh, but he got he got called before the uh, Australian Royal Commission to talk about Watchtower policy, and he he's dancing around, and he says that he that's not my department, you know, you know, like the old uh, who who's that guy the the Tom one Lair. Tom Lair song oh, about sorry. Werner von Braun. He says. Uh, about the V2 rockets. Where they come up? Uh, is, once the rockets go up, who cares, where, who, who cares where they go down? That's not my department, in Vanna von Braun. <laughs> That's what these guys do. They, they're chicken. And, and 
they're hypocrites. I've written my congressman twice, two different congressmen, and I'm going to continue to do so uh, to talk about this organization and its charitable status. And I think everybody should. And I think any, as Americans, we have that right to, to as voting Americans, we have that right to, to uh, access our, our legislators, our the body of representatives to call to attention what we think are, are uh, dangers to our way of life, to our government, to the community, and, uh, and try to inst instigate some action. Um, I mean, they are getting charitable status, and yet the Watchtower and its policies and its two-witness rule are putting the entire community, the world, uh, who um, they, they despise, um, in danger. They're putting children in danger by their policies, and and, and leaving uh, and leaving uh, uh, people who are child sex offenders uh, as uh, good standing members of their congregations, and going door to door, and 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 looking for potential victims uh, that way. And there's just one more thing that I wanted to add is that the governing body uh, and the Jehovah's Witness religion makes it clear that they're, that they're supposed to be politically neutral, even though they, uh, they claim that they themselves are the only legitimate government on this planet. Uh, no, they do not, do not recognize any other government as being legitimate, that they're all ruled by Satan, and they deny their members from voting, and from partaking of any political stand, they're supposed to stay politically neutral. But then you hear Toni Morris get up in front of a convention or an assembly. I, I don't know what they call it, but they, when, when they made uh, gay marriage legal in Ireland, uh, he spoke out very strongly against it. And he, he mentioned about how strongly his Irish national wife uh, had taken uh, exception and taken umbrage over the fact that Ireland had made gay marriage uh, legal. And <clears throat> doesn't that smack of political partisanship? Isn't that, doesn't that, indicate that they have political leanings uh you know how can somebody who's telling people how to be from a political point of view have such strong and 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 is able to express such strong political leanings uh, get away with it and uh, it's almost as if the members are blind to the elephant in the room and and they are they are they they for some reason block out these outrageous things that tony morris says that, that that are so contradictory that he has an entirely different standard by which he sets for himself that he can live that as a governing body member, rules don't apply to him, only to the, to the laity, only to the membership uh, do these rules apply. Uh, he is above all rules. And of course, again, that goes back to his belief that he's one of the 144,000. Again, do you think that he is that exceptional out of the hundreds of billions of human beings that have lived on this earth uh, since the time of Jesus, that, that Toni Morris, of all people, deserves? Is, is that exceptional, to be part of the 144,000? So these contradictions, uh, these, these hypocrisies, really can't be excused any longer they never should they never should be excused to begin with 
but it's just so obvious that that the governing body members hold themselves out as this elite group when they're just the this group of pathetically inconsistent and awful people who can ruin people's lives without thinking about it and live their lives isolated and secluded in this little world that that uh, that they live in this little bubble that they live in and and ignore what they do to the rest of the the membership and how they can ruin the lives of, of millions literally millions of people no wonder Jehovah's Witnesses have the highest turnaround rate of any religion in the United States. People soon catch on that that they don't they don't you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander. They say, well, it, it doesn't work that way in the Jehovah's Witnesses. There is a hierarchical system and you are somewhere along on the ladder of that system and if you're on the lower rungs there are a whole set of different standards that apply to you and you're up there on the in the uh, upper echelons and you can do pretty much what you want and uh, it's a bully system they're bullies they're basically bullies so and that's the that's been their approach this their modus operandi um since basically since charles taze russell and uh he used strong arm uh effects when when he instituted the vow by printing the names of all the people who accepted the vow he was shaming those who wouldn't commit to taking the vow, who didn't want that intrusion upon their lives. And uh, Russell said, well, what do you have to hide if you don't want to have your name printed as accepting the vow? And so the Watchtower, they've had a long, long history of bullying people. The whole thing needs to be dismantled. And um, I don't think that will ever stop people from ever believing. I mean, the Bible students didn't go away. Uh, there, there probably would be if the corporation was ever shut down. Uh, there would be pockets of different factions of Jehovah's Witnesses. But at least this machine, this, this, this cult, who is not really a religion but a government operating under the surface of a government. It's a government operating within governments, uh, flying under the radar, and they're, they're not being noticed. Um, they're just sitting there waiting for the opportunity to take rule. And they admit that. They admit that they are the only legitimate government on earth. This is what they claim. And Tony is one of, one of the 144,000. I, I wonder if God's got a still in heaven. You know? Or what they're going to do when Jameson's is crushed in Armageddon. Boy, that is, <laughs> that is a, that's going to be a problem. So anyway, this is Truth Seeker here. Um, you know, if this didn't happen in my backyard... Uh, I probably wouldn't be saying anything, but, you know, these people need to be called out. And they need to be called out for what they are. They're not only human. They, they should be held to a higher standard. And, and when they not only fail that standard, you know, people could understand if they tried and tried to be moral uh, leaders and, and, and slipped and failed. You can forgive them for that. These guys don't even try. They don't even come close to trying. So anyway, true seeker here. Um, and I'm sure everybody pretty much agrees with what I'm saying. So, so long.
and best to you, and call your congressman. That that you know, send a message, send an email to your congressman. That I'm going to, I'm going to do it a third time. So long, everyone.